All right, guys, short video on what I'm going to be watching for some, hopefully, some day trading opportunities on Wednesday, November 6th. Showing you the SPY as I always start with, and you can see the last two days have been very narrow days that have uh, closed below their open. Um, I ended up losing over 600 bucks today, which I, I, you know, everybody has red days, and I understand that, and I do too, but I can't help but feel like an ass sitting in front of my computer for a full day and coming out red. Um, and you know, there's nobody to blame. There's nothing to blame other than, um, you know, the market was, you can see, very low volume, very narrow range. And for most of the day, I was flat, right? Basically flat, like down 70 bucks. And then, um, you know, took a little bit too much size on a trade late in the day out of pure boredom. You know, you get, you just get bored when there's nothing moving. And so anyway, that's, that was my mistake of the day. Um, hung around on after hours trying to catch something. I was bidding on MTCH um, down below 55 bucks, but I didn't get it. So ended up with no after hours trades and a net minus 600 and something $60 today. So anyway, that's uh, the, the, the life of a day trader. Um, what am I watching tomorrow? Let's bring up RKDA. Um, nice little breakout of about a one month range today on decent volume and a fairly strong close. I wanna watch that for a continuation tomorrow. Loco, uh, Wayne made a nice call on this in the afternoon. Um, you had the big pop, then the quiet inside day, and it's right back up. So I don't know, it still feels like it's pretty far from the moving averages, but I am gonna watch it if it can get above, um, well, a couple catalysts. One would be over 1524, today's high. And then I always look to the left and say, you know, the high from the other day was 15, basically 1531. And that could be another catalyst for higher prices. But it is kind of extended from the moving averages. Speaking of match.com, I actually am going to watch this one. Um, I, I, 55 bucks, if you slide to the left here, had a nice bounce back here and some consolidation in this area. Um, so for that reason, I was kind of watching it there and it just didn't quite get there. It got to like, I don't know, 57 something. Uh, this is in after hours on earnings. Anyway, um, I'm going to watch this because it's kind of down into some support. We'll see if it gives a potential long tomorrow. And that's not something I'm really known for doing and not something I like to do is play something on the long side that's, um, you know, that's gapping down. But when something's gapping into some support, they become kind of interesting to me in that light. So we'll see. Um, that's MTCH, uh, PRTK. Uh, very nice volume, although closing well off of its highs. But if you go to intraday, this thing had a really nice run here before giving some of it back. Um, and I want to watch that for maybe a red to green, something like that. NIO, look at the volume on this. 184 million shares today. Uh, closing pretty close to its highs, though. So we're going to watch for a continuation day. By the way, did you all see NXTC? Uh, I tweeted something like, you know, once about once every six months, one of these happens. And all that does is serve to uh, take any new shorts that haven't seen this yet and hand their butt to them. And uh, then you know to never, never short something like this again. This, you know, I, I, honestly, somebody said this was like phase one data or something, right? In my opinion, what happens is, you know, let's just say, I don't know, somewhere in here, this thing just moved on phase one from 25 to 35. Somewhere in here, people start to say, all right, this is dumb, and they short, right? They short, and then what happens? it keeps going higher and their only way out is to cover. So they cover and you get another pop and then people say, well, now it's really stupid and they short, right? They see a candle like this and they short and guess what? End up having to cover again. Long story short, this thing went all the way up to almost 110 bucks, probably ruined a few people today, uh, newer, newer traders that are, uh, you know, experimenting with shorting. And this is why uh, there was a story on, um, God, I can't remember the symbol now, KBIO maybe? that Martin Shkreli, whatever his name is, um, there was a guy that opened a GoFundMe account because not only did he lose his, in, his entire account shorting a move like this, right, and adding to it, not only did he lose the entire account, he owed E-Trade like $100,000 on top of his whole account being gone. That's why I generally don't short. Um, you know, you can get caught into a, 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 what I call a trading death spiral when you think something can't go farther and it does. And the thing about going long is the worst it can do is go to zero, right? Going short, there's no limit to how high it can go, right? So you short this at 30, you don't just lose 100% of your money when it gets to 60. You, you can lose uh, two or 300% of your money if it keeps going. So anyway, um, 
long story short, I just wanted to point that out. That is a crazy move. I am not looking to trade that tomorrow, but um, I did want to point that out for those of you that didn't see that. Um, SGRY is kind of a lower volume stock, but a nice breakout through this nine area, kind of a little cup and handle going. Nice breakout, even broke the 200 day and closed really strong. Um, worth noting that that volume spike still wasn't a million shares, so it's probably pretty spready. I didn't watch it trade today. I found it tonight looking at, uh, at my scans. ABUS still kind of flagging below the highs that it hit the other day. It hit 162, kind of flagging below that. I like it over that flag. Um, PETS did bounce today, finally. I'm going to look for a follow through on this green day, continuation of the bounce tomorrow. And then Starbucks, I actually like this one. Um, four days in a row after gapping down, a little bit of a hammer candle uh, that pierced the 200 day but closed right at it. I like it for a potential long tomorrow, hopefully with a decent intraday, you know, A plus setup. And hopefully we'll find some gappers to add to this list as well. And one more, hopefully, hopefully I trade better tomorrow and don't succumb to boredom and all that stuff and try to force trades. All right, I'm done babbling. See you in chat tomorrow.